What's up guys? Welcome back to Kelly Marie Fit. Um, it is Saturday morning and I am about to film another macro friendly recipe for you guys. So what we're going to do today is a white chicken chili. This is not one of my recipes. I actually found this on Pinterest at, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the blog, but I will put it here on the screen somewhere or down in the bottom bar below for you. You are getting me in full weekend face right now. There is no makeup. We are letting the skin breathe. Um, had a great arm workout this morning, and after I get this filmed, I am going to be taking some much-needed downtime. Official prep starts in four weeks for me, so I just have a couple cheat nights left to go. So you best believe I'm taking full advantage of that shit tonight. So the first steps when you're doing a macro sort of bulk cooking, and I've done I've done some videos on this before with chili, with crock pots. When you have a lot of ingredients that you're going to be dumping into a big pot together and then portioning out, the first step is to count the macros in the ingredients that are going in. So what you're going to end up with is basically these giant numbers, which are going to be the macros for the entire thing that you're making. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, you want to be able to measure the total weight of just the food product once you're done making it. So for example, um, like when I did the chili or the chicken, can't remember what it was, I did something in the crock pot and I needed to know what the weight of the crock pot empty was beforehand so I could take the total weight once it was done cooking, subtract the weight of the crock pot and know how much weight I had just in the food. And the reason you do that is you're going to know how many macros are in all of the food, right? And you wanna say get eight servings out of it, which is what we're gonna do today. You wanna to be able to take that total weight and divide it by eight so you can portion that out. And then you're also gonna take the total number of macros and divide each of those by eight so you see what your macros are per serving. You'll see what I mean. So for example, this is the pot that I'm gonna be using to make this chili today, and I weighed this bad boy. He comes in at two pounds and one ounce. Um, I do tend to go back and forth between grams and ounces, and it's really whatever, you can do whatever you want. I kind of just think of it as like a size thing. So when you have something that could be 950 grams or two pounds or you know 32 ounces, I usually just go for the smaller number for simplicity. So once you have all of your ingredients prepped and pre-cut and trimmed and what have you, like here I've got, here I've got my two pounds of chicken breast that I showed you. I've got my 200 grams of onion and this is eight cloves of garlic minced. And I did part of that, you can use the garlic mincer or you can just chop it up really fine with a knife. It's kind of half and half on my end. Um, you're gonna get your pot on the stove ready to go. And we're just gonna start loading in the ingredients one at a time, so here we go. As you can see, um, our pot is a little bit small for all of our chicken to be touching the bottom. For this step, you do not need to cook the chicken all the way through. You're just gonna wanna get it sort of partially cooked because um, the chicken is gonna simmer in the pot for like an hour to an hour and a half once some other ingredients are in, and that will cook it up a little bit. So you don't wanna be over drying the chicken um, by getting it cooked all the way through at the start. So what we're gonna do here is just kind of like let it brown and move it around so all of the two pounds of chicken get a nice sear on it before we move on to the next step. So once your chicken is starting to look like this where you're not really seeing any of the pink on the outside anymore, that means you're getting a pretty good sear on it. You've had the onions in here for a few minutes with it about this point. So I've been going for about nine minutes to get my chicken looking like this and the onions have been in here for about three. They're starting to soften up and get really fragrant as well. Um, the next thing that you're gonna add to this is, um, not monster, that's for me, you're gonna add your garlic to this. So go ahead and just get that in there. Maybe get a rubber spatula to get the rest of that out. And you wanna get that down towards the heat as well, just so that can kind of release all of its goodness into the chicken. So just kinda of like flip and toss like so. While we let the garlic and the chicken and the onion get happy, the next things that we're gonna add are the first four cups of chicken broth. The recipe calls for six. You only want to use four for this part, remember that. Um, your green chiles and cumin. So we're gonna get these guys ready to go in next. Since we're looking pretty good, we're gonna go ahead and take our chicken broth and just dump all of this in. One of these cartons is 32 ounces, so that's four cups, four eight ounce cups. So this is how I, that's why I have mine separated between the carton and the can, because the can is two cups. 
um, and this is four. So it just works out really well for this particular recipe. So once you've added the broth and the cumin and the green chiles, you wanna raise that heat up and get everything that's in this pot to boil. Once it boils, you're gonna lower the temperature and you're gonna let it simmer for 60 to 90 minutes. You're trying to get the amount of liquid that's in the pot to reduce by about half. So kind of keep an eye on it. Do leave it uncovered, otherwise you're not gonna lose any liquid. It has to evaporate. Duh. Yeah. Go drink a monster, fold some laundry, do what you gotta do, and we'll check back in 60 minutes. Okay, so we are going on about an hour and 20 minutes here, and I don't really feel like the liquid reduced by nearly half, like maybe a little bit. Um, so I think what I might do is just leave out the last two cups of chicken broth that's supposed to go in, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put in the two remaining ingredients that we had. So that was the two cups of corn kernels. Just gonna throw that right in the pot. And then two cans of the great northern beans, which you are supposed to drain out. So I've got them in a colander here. They've been drained. We're good to go. The nice thing about beans is they tend to soak up a lot of liquid, even if they are canned. So I'm hoping that that will thicken this up a little bit after I kind of heat it through and let it sit. If it doesn't, we're just going to eliminate the last two cups of the chicken broth, like I said. And um, that's only going to reduce the total macros by like two carbs and two grams of protein. So no big deal. So I've got that mashed up and in here. The next step is gonna be to get the chicken out and shred that. You can do this in a couple of ways. You can just take, use the two forks method where you take two forks and just kind of like pull the chicken apart. Or my preference is to use a KitchenAid mixer, which I'm gonna do right now. You just pop it out with the paddle attachment and throw all the chicken in the bowl. And with the paddle attachment, mix it up really fast for like 60 seconds and it'll shred it really evenly, really nicely every time. And then you're gonna throw that back in the pot. So here we go. Now we have the chicken and the corn and all of that other good stuff in here. This is the final product. I'm gonna let all that heat through and see if some of that juice soaks up. I'm actually pretty happy with this consistency. If you wanted to make it a little bit more soup-like, you probably could go ahead and add that last two cups of broth, but I don't know. I think I'm feeling it kind of as it is. So that being said, the next step is going to be to let it cool a little bit and then we're gonna weigh it. So what you might run into here, I'm gonna put you guys down here real quick, sorry. Okay, so what you might run into with the weighing process, um, especially if you just have a little kitchen food scale, is that the combination of all of that, all that stew, all that soup with the pot is gonna be too heavy for what your food scale has the capacity to weigh. So what I like to do, and it also helps it cool faster if you do this, is I like to get a second bowl, usually like a pretty big mixing bowl, like something you might put popcorn or something in, and I just split it up. Since we already know how much the pot weighs, we can find out how much that separate bowl weighs and then just dump as much of the mixture as we feel like into that second bowl. So you do end up with two measurements of weight, um, but it's you know simple math, you just add it together. So um, I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit and then once it's more like room temperature, I will get out the second bowl and I will show you how we weigh it out and then divide that into serving sizes and figure out what the macros per serving are and then we're done. So now we know that our total weight of that soup was 94.6 ounces, and I said I wanted to get eight servings out of this, so you just simply do 94.6 divided by eight, and you know that for each serving, you have to weigh out 11.825 ounces, or for simplicity's sake, let's just call it 12. For a 12 ounce serving, now we're gonna work out the macros for that. So we remember that adjusting for that chicken soup broth that we left out, um, our total macros for the whole pot were 63 grams of fat, 
226 grams of carbs and 362 protein. So we just divide each of those numbers by eight and you need to do a little bit of rounding on these, but what you're gonna end up with is eight grams of fat, 28 carb and 45 protein per 12 ounce serving. So that is how you break down macros. Um, I'm gonna put some of the math up on the screen, so hopefully that'll help if this is the first time you've ever done it. Um, I did have one other video that I did this for, so you can go back and try to find that one if you need to have some more questions or wanna see it done again. Um, so I'm just gonna get out a whole bunch of Ziploc Tupperware that I've got, and I'm gonna divvy this bad boy up and throw it in the fridge. Um, this recipe I have done once before, and it kept really well in the fridge for me for like the whole week. I took it for lunches for a week, for a week. I made it on a Sunday and ate it through like Thursday. That's it, that's your white chicken chili macro friendly recipe and how to break it down by macros per serving. So I hope that you enjoyed and thanks for watching. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.